So we've got Cody and Chris from Wage War. If you're listening to this, I don't know uh, if you'll be able to tell them apart, but right now on the screen is Cody. Chris is the other guy that you haven't seen yet. Um, but yeah, I guess, first of all, I wanted to say thank you very much for doing this. I'm excited to talk to you guys. Thank you. Appreciate you having us. Well, uh, I'm, I'm curious what you guys have to say because, you know, I've uh, been somewhat critical of you guys in the past, um, but I do love the new album. I guess you guys saw that. So let's, uh, let's, let's set the record straight. Feel free to, <laughs> feel free to, um, you know, don't be gentle with me. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, uh, you know, we all, uh, we all got sent the, uh, the review that you did and I just want to say thank you for, uh, the kind words. Um, obviously just as with every record that every artist ever puts out, there's a lot of work, a lot of thought, a lot of time put into it. So, um, to, to feel the appreciation, um, and, uh, people responding, uh, so well to it is, is a big thing for us. So I want to thank you, uh, for your kind words. And obviously, you know, you have an important part in this scene and, uh, in kind of a pedestal. So it, it means a lot that you, uh, that you liked it. So I appreciate that. Well, yeah. Thank you for watching it. Um, I guess, uh, well, what, what did you think of my review? I mean, for anybody who hasn't heard the review, essentially what I said is that I, I didn't care for some of the, I didn't care for the last album because a little bit too rock for me. Um, sure. but I like the new one because I feel like uh, you guys have kind of, uh, I guess what I would say is like combined all the different styles you've done from like the early stuff that's like super heavy to the more rock stuff. It feels like, and then some of the new stuff like with Manic. Uh, it feels to me like this album is is like your final form. That was kind of my my take on it. Um, what did you think of that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a great take. Um, you know, we've, you know, we're a band that's now, this is our fourth record. Um, first record, you know, you had your entire life to write your first record. So you've know, been writing that since I was, you know, 14 and then uh, put it out when I was 21. And that's a collection. That was a collection of like 35 songs, I think. Uh, we had two and a half weeks to do it. We hunkered down, got the best ones we could. And uh, that was that. Dead Weight came at like a really fragile time um, as far as uh, emotionally. And it's a very focused breakup record. Um, and then Pressure is literally what it sounds like. We had a very small amount of time to make a record. Um, and, you know, I'm very, I'm still very proud of Pressure. Obviously, it was our most critically acclaimed record as far as like the one that people had the most to say. But as you gain more fans and listeners and whatnot, like more people are going to have more to say about your record. And I'm totally fine with that. And I understand that. I accept that. I understand that, you know, at times we will take risks that people are not all on board with. And I appreciate that too. And then what they don't get to see is us, which is five of us who play, you know, 150 to 200 shows a year. You know, you have however many songs you have to play. And it's just like, I don't want to play the same song every single night. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then 10 times, you know what I mean? So uh, I think it felt like a natural time for us to kind of grow. And, uh, you know, pressure was an awesome record for us. I think we learned a lot of lessons in the positive and the negative. Like, there's some things that we tried and we're just like, you know what, maybe we won't try that again. And, um, you know, I think we used the ammo of what we had from that to make, um, to make manic. Uh, and a lot of people have said it and it feels, I feel like I've come to grips with this. Just like manic feels like the perfect blend between dead weight and pressure. Which just yeah. like, you have your songs that are like, you know, I mean, calm, whatever you will, radio accessible, melodic, like what, whatever people choose to define them as like, we have the songs that, you know, have some reach to them and like can, can help us get out of, you know, the, you know, the, the metal core staple and, and, and rise above and just kind of float above the surface of the, you know, however many hundred bands sound exactly like us. Um, but at the same time, like we have the songs that are like, if this is what you got into our band for, like, here you go. You know what I mean? Like, Death and it's roll. like weird. I feel like it's like weird and you're almost like vulnerable when you're like trying to branch out too, you know, cause like I know, for our band, like first record, second record, like very heavy pressure was definitely probably a shock for like some people who had listened to us before, you know, with certain aspects of it. But I feel like for us, it's like, I know how talented Cody is and I know how talented other people are. And it's like, like you said in your like review kind of of our band, you know, but even like the new record. Uh, and I appreciate that you said that it's just like, you can't fault people. And I feel like you can't, I don't fault us, you know, for like trying to like take steps and like just see no, you'd be stupid not to. Yeah. You know, and it's like if you have the just, potential to do something that might get an octane. You should fucking do it. 
or just like to make your own sound you know it's like at this point it's like part of that is like hard to do you know no matter who you are it's like sure so is, many baby. years of, and so many records have been made you know and it's like we're all influenced by so many different bands but i feel like it's hard to like be like all right who who are we you know like by ourselves like what makes us unique and different and I feel like it took writing three records to like try to find your lane you know and figure it out and like do it to the best of your ability um i feel like i feel like the word for this record is like identity you know what i mean like this is the first record where it feels like you can listen to it front to back and be like that that's a wage war record you know what i mean and mm -hmm. people have have called us for you know a, a number of of things it's just like we bro we played metalcore you know what i mean like there are five big bands right. and if you tune <laughs> it's gonna to sound like at least one of them if yeah if you if you you know tune to a certain tuning uh if you open your your song with like a you know phone filtered low tuned guitar yeah. riff um whatever it is just like all of the break dude think about you know think about like the inception of metalcore like in the early 2000s and here we are in 2021 there are no breakdown patterns left. You know what I mean? Like there's right. just like, th thankfully, like, you know, we're still coming out with some of them, but it's just like, we're going to reach the point where it's just like, yeah, at this point you're just recycling. And, you know, obviously we're kids that grew up on it and we always want to pay homage to it and, and, uh, and be respectful of what it is and, um, and still further that, but also it's like, it's going to take, you know, bands like us need space to grow so that we can keep this going, but also make it more accessible. And I think the awesome thing about metal right now, and, um, you know, with everything that's going on in music and like, you know, um, just like who's on top of whatever, it's like we're seeing guitars and drums like recur into the top 40 now. And it's mm -hmm. just like bands are coming back into like top 40 radio. And it's like, there's all this new weird, like trap emo, like whatever it is. And it's like, call it what you will. It might not be for you, but no matter what's happening, that is a good thing for people that listen to this music because that is allowing a window for people are like, well, I like this. And then they can dive deeper. And all of a sudden it's just like, wow, I've never heard of this band. And now I'm into it because I started liking this extremely popular artist who made a, you know, pop punk record or whatever. And all of a sudden now you're back at some band that's been grinding for 10 years and finally gets their break. You know what I mean? So a lot of positive things going on for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think for you guys, another I don't know, complication maybe for your career is that because you were successful starting with your first album, you didn't get to sort of um, experiment in obscurity like other people may have, like, you know, a band that doesn't get popular till their third or fourth album, you know, they can take some chances and nobody's going to be watching. Whereas you guys, you know, be, because you were good from the beginning, you didn't have that luxury. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that. Um, I, I feel like when we put out blueprints, like, I don't think we really knew what we had, you know what I mean? Like we were excited about it. And to me, like, I mean, I'll, I'll just say it. Like people talk about like our band being called like generic metalcore or whatever. Like if you want to look at the most generic metalcore in the book, just look at our first record. Like it's literally, you know, I, I, yeah, but it's I, great. It is great, but I perfectly own that we did not reinvent the reinvent the what? wheel. You don't have we to. Just did it. We don't have to exactly. But um, but what I'm saying is like, generic wise, like it's there. But I do agree that you know we did it to the best of our ability, and to to some that is a, a great thing. And so I appreciate that. And the same thing as it like keeps on going. And so um, yeah, it's just like it's crazy to to look back and see how how our band has progressed, and uh, we feel very fortunate and blessed to be in the position that we are. And um, never along the way have we taken a single step for granted or uh, a single moment or anything. So, um, dude, we're just happy to be here and, and, uh, yeah. It's nice. It's nice to be like back in the internet's favor, uh, somewhat, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. not, not that like with the last record it was terrible, but our managers used to joke with us, like on our first, like two records are like, I'm just telling you guys, like you exist in this space on the internet that shouldn't exist like everyone's just nice to you yeah like all all the youtube comments like everyone just was like oh like i love this band and if anyone had something negative to say there's like five people just like you should just leave you know or whatever right. and then uh i feel like we just got like a little taste of just like reality you know like as you're growing it's like you're gonna have more people critiquing you and stuff like stuff well like it's that. a double-edged sort of like you know, you could continue. I mean, I remember when Wage War was definitely like Reddit's 
favorite band for a while. Yeah. Huh. It's still yeah. in the general, in like their general topics thread. It says like, yeah. all these things in the bo- bottom right. one is always why wage war is underrated. And do like, you, uh, do you, do you guys see know, everything? Do you guys know core jerk on Reddit? No. Oh, no. You, gotta, you, you gotta see that. It's basically a parody of like the uh, metalcore Reddit circle jerking over a different band every six months. Gotcha. So it's okay. all these bots. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can take any more Reddit, dude. <laughs> it's, it's great. There's there's a wage war like auto mod like auto bot thing that if you ever say wage war, it spits out like an auto reply. It's great. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> great. Um, but it, but it was interesting to see that that like you know for a couple of years it was just like everybody loved wage war and it was, I mean, it, I, it's cool. Like you guys deserved it. Um, and, and it sounds like, you know, maybe that changed at a certain point. Yeah. I think pressure came at, at a time where people weren't ready for, for the things that we were doing. And, um, like I said, I, I stand by pressure till the day I die. You know, I, I would never, I really truly believe that i I believe in everything that this band has put out and I realize that not all of it has worked and I realize that not all of it is stuff that we maybe should have done, but I'm proud that we did it and took the stand. Oh, I don't um, think there's anything you did that you shouldn't have done at all. Like, yeah, even, and, if I don't, someone, even if I don't like it, like I, I don't think you've yeah. done anything that's bad at all. No. Well, I, I appreciate you saying that someone, someone told me if you're not scared putting on a record, then you didn't do it right. Yeah. And I yeah. stand by that because like, I mean, we can take this all the back to it or all the way back to the fact that like life's too short. You know what I mean? Like yeah. life's too short for us to, to waste an entire 14 to 16 month record cycle, making the same record that we know is safe. Yeah. And so when people talk about like selling out and stuff, and this is across, this is across the entire genre for me. It's like, you want to talk about selling out, selling out to me is making a record that you didn't want to make because you think it'll make you more money. So it's Absolutely. like, if we would have, if we would have made it, or because you think it's what nerds on Reddit are going to praise you for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, and I think what we found off the back of pressure is just like, we released pressure August 30th, uh, went straight into uh, our biggest headlining tour uh, of all time. You know what I mean? And I don't say that to brag. I say that as a, as a proud point for us because we have worked so hard to get here to the point where like we were selling out house of blues, Chicago, house of blues, Orlando, um, all of these big venues that we played one of five at, you know, just four years ago. Right. And here we are on this record that is so debated on the internet and, um, and people are coming out and, uh, and singing words. And, um, and I obviously very much appreciate that. And I also don't fault people that don't like it. Like I'm, I'm not a hater. Like if you were to look at our socials or even our personal socials, it's just like, we never give the time of day to anybody that would say anything negative about it just because like, I would much rather appreciate the people that are in, that are enjoying it or getting something out of it. Um, and I, think, I feel that way. I feel that way period. Like about yeah, music. It's just like, yeah. I, I don't care if you're my mom, my dad, my wife. It's just like, if you don't like it, like genuinely, like I don't care like ever, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's just like, and if you want to like talk about stuff, like talk about it, you know, and just like, but I feel like it's weird. Like I would love for my family to come to a show and I have family members that probably don't like my music, but I would love if you just came cause you care about me, you know? And like, uh, I don't know, like, I feel like what is important and like what I like about what you do. And like at the end of the like review that you had about us, you were like, I hope you guys don't hate me, you know? And instantly I was like, I don't, because what I appreciate about people like you is you have an opinion that you're entitled to, but you actually show that you take the time to like look back at our history and where we're from and what our albums were like and what this is like and what's that that's like. And it's like, it's just my opinion. And and I respect, I'm more inclined to respect that opinion than I am someone who's just like trash. You know, it's just like, because I know you listen to a lot of music and maybe it's not for you, but you're not going to hurt my feelings. You know, what's what will like hurt my feelings if I didn't have like as much of a backbone as I built up over time is just like people who just spit out whatever they want, like super rude, like attacking, yeah. like attacking people who do like the music, you know, it's just like, if it's not for you, that's fine. But if you see someone that does don't call them a name or like, I don't know, you know, you don't have to like spread that around. Just there are so many different types of music. Listen to something else. I have, I've legitimately never logged into a single social media site to be like socks. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, like if anything, I, I use, you know, the whatever, you know, 
uh, space or whatever I have to just like promote things that I like. I've just never, you know what I mean? I've never found the time of day to just like tear people down. And especially when you come to like the arts of arts of things and like, I mean, there's, there's plenty of bands that I really don't care for, but you know, I'm never going to be like, yo, this sucks. It's just like, what you're doing is maybe not for me, but I like support you in like the hand in hand of like, we're all just out here trying to do it, bro. And then you had a pandemic on top of it. It's just like, we're all really trying to do it right now. You know what I mean? You know, I try really hard. Um, It's tough because I have to sometimes have critical opinions or say that I don't like something and that I don't think it's good because I just can't, I just can't, you know, would be dishonest to just never say anything critical or negative. Um, But I genuinely, it's not that I'm afraid of what people will think or something, but like, I just, I know how much it sucks to have people tear shit down, you know, that you've invested your time and your life in and like, this is your career and stuff. And I know how much it sucks to read people because I mean, people do it to me too, just nitpicking and tearing it down and stuff. And I, it's, it's really tough because I, I don't ever want to be that person. Yeah. And sometimes but, but, I probably am, you know, and I, and if it ever, if I ever do that, I feel bad because I don't want to be that person. Well, I thought for what it's worth, I thought, uh, you're set up in, in, uh, in your review of manic at least. And now truthfully, that's, that's what I've seen. So I don't, if there's past things that I haven't seen, Oh, I made fun uh, of you guys for genting in a colored room. Okay. Um, Oh bro, it's hotline bling, but metal. Come on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's what we and, were saying when we're shooting it. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and I, I've, I've made fun of, uh, the, uh, the architects riff a couple of times. Cool. You ready? To, can I give you the story? Can we give the, yeah, please do. Exclusive? I would love to hear it. The exclusive, right. exclusive take right here. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm going to give you the full thing, baby. Okay. Yeah, please do. Okay. So, um, I mean, I'll, I'll come out and say it. I'm a huge architects fan. Always have been. You can hear it in our music. You can hear it from record one that I love architects. And the fact that no one has been like, you know, oh, I hear Architects vibe in this until that song. It's just like, we've always loved Architects, you know, and um, rest in peace, Tom Serrell, like huge inspiration on me and on all of Metalcore. Like you can, any band that you can imagine, like Architects has always been there. I saw Architects for the first time when I was like 14. They were on, uh, it was Sounds, or no, it was, it was, something like that. It was, it was called the Cool Tour. And they oh, were yeah, like that. three of 10, like, yeah. They were on the hollow crown cycle. Uh, their banner was a piece of paper against uh, <laughs> Azalea Dying's gong symbol. Uh, and I just remember sitting there in House of Blues Orlando and just being like, this band rips so hard. You know what I mean? And I didn't come back to them until they kind of switched from like the panic chord yeah. side into the like more melodic metal chord side. But um, <laughs> so we get to low. Um, and this is going to require me to dive into my phone because uh, when we put out this song, I made this video and I promised I would never post it. So I'm not going to, but um, I'm going to like straight up, I have date marks and everything. I wrote the riff for low long before doomsday ever came out. I have exactly the way that it is the cadence, which is the only thing that people can find me on is the fact that it's, you know, all of that it is exactly the same way that it was. And I have the date stamps of doomsday release and me writing the riff and very unfortunately, or maybe even fortunately for us, it's one of our biggest songs now. And maybe that's due to debate. Maybe that's due to people liking it. Like whatever it might be, like they ended up being extremely similar. Um, and just like we were talking about earlier, like we have made it a point to put all of our efforts into the positive things as opposed to the negative things. So it came out, obviously people are like, Oh, it's doomsday or whatever. And it's just like, I can obviously as a musician, I can count, I can count beats. I can count whatever, like I can see where the similarities are. Um, no disrespect to architects. And honestly, at this point, if my riff pays respect and homage to Tom Serrell, I'm stoked. You know what I mean? Like he's a legend in our scene and, um, and someone that I've always looked up to as a riff writer. Um, but I mean, straight up facts. Like I, I did not steal that riff. Like I have, I'm gonna have to find it right now. Chris, no, 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 I, I mean, no, it's I not, feel like, no. I feel like bottom line, it's like, is it architects inspired? Like, 100%. Yeah, you know, it's just like, and so is so much of our music. And it's just like, and I remember even being in the studio when we were like recording that song and like, it's certainly like, 
it got talked about, you know, and it's like, because we knew like, this does sound similar and it's like, but it was hard for us to decide like, okay, we'll do, we make the song worse on purpose right. to avoid something being similar that I know was like almost just like an, an accident that they came out that way. You know, it's like, I don't know. You just go through that. Like, well, I don't want to make the song worse. You right. know, you kind of just accept. And the same thing you had said at the end of our video, like I very much hope architects doesn't hate us, you know, because it would hurt, you know, they, they seem, I, I've never met them, but they seem like great guys. So I, I'm sure that they don't. Um, but uh, you know, it's, it, it's kind of like you were saying earlier, the, the boundaries of metal core are narrow enough that it's totally believable to me that two people could come up with two riffs that sound pretty similar like that. Just like how many people have accidentally written the same thing as a kill switch riff? Yeah. Probably yeah. tons because it's like, well, if you're going to write something in that style, the boundaries are pretty narrow. So two yeah. people could certainly come up with the same thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I just pulled up the video, which I guess I don't have to show or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Cody's like, I got We believe you. Yeah. It's all good. It's June, June 9th, 2017 is when I wrote the riff. Doomsday came out. Uh, let's see here. We believe you, right. Cody. <laughs> this is like the OJ no, trial. It's like, the it's, it's, like, if it doesn't fit, you must have quit. Yeah. Well, no, I just, you know, I've always wanted to to set it straight and I'm glad I get to do it here. And uh, again, there, there's no disrespect. Like I have all of the respect and love for architects. Like to this day, a fan, like I think they're a great band. Um, and uh, yeah, but I, I think what makes me excited looping it back to Manic is that this is the first record where I feel like at no point on this record, are you going to listen to a single part of this and be like, Oh, like they got that from that or whatever. Or like, this sounds like that. Like, I think we finally found identity. Um, and you know, there's, there's still some of those elements of like the really melodic down tune metal core, whatever, like there's some of that on there, but for the most part, like, I think we finally found something that people are like, this is wage war. You know what I mean? And I, I remember for us the first time, like I would go on Reddit metalcore or whatever and find like, you know, the FFO colon thing where it's like for fans of it, people would say wage war. And I was like, dang, like, that's so cool. Like people to start being you know, the band that to start being people, like some kind you know, of a bar or a standard. YouTube. Yeah. So, um, yeah, sorry. I, I didn't mean to, to dive too deep into that, but no, no, uh, I, I love that's that. I genuinely, I appreciate that you, uh, you know, that you shared that that's cool to know. And you know, I, it's totally possible for people to, you know, come up with, uh, there's a term for it, but you know, come up with similar ideas in parallel. Like it's, it happens all the time. Telepathy. Um, what's that? It's a telepathy. Yes. ESP. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, well, I, there's a couple of questions I had, uh, also kind of, uh, things I touched on in that video. So, um, yeah. I, I know Andrew Wade very well. I've known him, worked with him a whole bunch going back to like 2013 or something like that. Um, and in, in, in I remember when him and Jeremy started working with you guys and stuff and, uh, you know, they're not gonna, there's a million bands from Ocala that would love to work with them. I'm sure. Um, why do you think that they chose to, you know, work with you and continue to working, continue to work with you so much? And like, what can people learn from that? Like if they want to, you know, if there's, if, if there's someone that they want to work with, what did you guys do right that other people could maybe do? I feel like we kind of just got linked up with like the right people like early or like people that had like interest in our band, um, like Jeremy or like Josh from ADTR and Andrew. And like, they kind of, we kind of, I don't know, like had sent some of them songs and they were interested, like thought the band was cool, you know, and like wanted to help us out and all that kind of stuff. Um, but kind of like you said, I feel like they just saw potential in us. And we had known some of them just from being from the same town for a while and been huge Data Remember fans since I was a kid. Like Homesick was the first record I spun in my car when I would turn 16. Uh, so I don't know. I feel like they just saw potential there in our hometown as well. And our recording budget early on was not a ton. So <laughs> it just made sense. I think, what do we have, Cody? Two weeks? Uh, two and a half weeks to get through 30, I think 35 demos. Oh, damn. It was, I mean, if you want to talk about stress, it was all time. I don't even know how that's physically possible. It was. Uh, it, it really wasn't. We just <laughs> got it. 
we just kind of did it and uh, hope for the best. And yeah, that's like that's two what songs a day. Yeah, it was yeah, great. Britain, and, Britain yeah. was tired. Yeah. 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 But, so, I mean, and, and you guys have continued to work with them. Uh, and you also started working with uh, Drew Folk, AKA Wizard Blood, who mm-hmm. is a fucking genius and everything he yeah. touches is amazing. Um, can you talk about kind of what he brought to the table with Manic and how you got hooked up with him? So, the beauty of this record, and probably my favorite part about it, and I think the thing that has made it work so well for us so far is that it's the perfect marriage of, of like forward thinking. And I would call that like the pressure era, but also remembering where you came from, which is like blueprints deadweight era. So this record is literally half Andrew and Jeremy and half, uh, Drew Falk. So and shout um, out to Jeff Dunn. He, did he work on this too? And Jeff. Yeah. Jeff Dunn. Um, shout out to yeah. Jeff too. Shout out to Jeff. Love Jeff. And um, Mark Lewis. And Mark yeah, Lewis. I know Mark too. Jeff. Let's go. Yeah. A lot, a lot of good people. But, um, so we got hooked up with Drew. Um, you know, I, I think when we started talking about pressure, we knew that it was time to kind of change it up a little bit. And it's not that, you know, it was like, this was a bad scenario. It's just like third record feels like a good time to like kind of branch out. Cause that's when most bands do, you know, you got your debut, you know, your sophomore, which could be sophomore slump, but if that crushes, you're like, all right, cool. It's time to go three. And so, most bands do kind of like branch out. And so, um, I had a, um, I had a, a meetup with Drew when he was in Orlando one time and, um, we just kind of sat and, and talked for a little bit and we just, you know, just personally had so much in common, um, that, you know, I, I talked to our team and I was like, I, I think this is it. Um, so we ended up doing low with Andrew and Jeremy in, uh, really late in 2018, and it came out top of 2019. We went to LA in March of 2019 and finished Pressure, the rest of Pressure. So low is Andrew and Jeremy, obviously mixed by Drew and Jeff. Uh, and the rest of the record is Drew. Um, so coming into this record, I was like, all right, cool. So, you know, and, and Pressure had a lot of wins for us with, you know, we had some radio, we had some Octane, um, some great looks on Danny Wimmer festivals, like some some really great things happened for us on the record. It was like, all right, cool. So. I have this collection of songs. I think by the time we were done for Manic, I had 19 songs maybe. And probably 35 more riffs. Riffs, yeah, just straight yeah. Up, just yeah. Uh, And so I was, I kind of like looked at the songs and I was like, all right, cool. So I want to do this batch with Drew and this batch with uh, Andrew and Jeremy. And so that's kind of, based on we, kind of which songs were a fit. Yeah, for, it was like almost yeah, like trying it, to like create the dream team depending on what, like the songs and you, if you think about it that way, listening to the record, you might even be able to. Yeah. Very Drew, Drew's that. more of a, uh, you know, he's has more of like a rap sensibility. He did Jeremy manic and, and he did teeth and, uh, what never said goodbye. So, and uh, true Circle colors, the drain. Circle the drain. Yeah. And then everything that kind of lo- was like, a, I think we're called, like, we've amongst ourselves called it like a step forward, but a step back at the same time. Um, which is funny because it's kind of in the lyrics of the first song, but, um, yeah, like we just kind of like diversified, like where the band was going with the songs to the producer. Um, and like I said, or like Chris said, like now knowing that, like, if you were to go back and listen to the record, I think you can very obviously tell, um, who did what. Um, but at the same time, we kind of tried to incorporate. Like the high horse chorus to me, that, that's, that, I hear a lot of Jeremy and Andrew in that. Yeah, so that, that is a Jeremy and Andrew song for sure. Um, and we, we took that one to the limit, uh, lyrically. Oh, just right. literally our, pedal to the metal. It's so yeah. good. That's such a fucking great <laughs> song. I love that song. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Um, we you guys really had, like, that is a fucking insane team. Like, for people, like, I work with all these producers, so that's how come I know all this, like, inside baseball stuff. But, like, that is a fucking ridiculous team. Like Andrew, Jeremy, Mark, Jeff, Drew. These are like the best fucking people you could possibly work with, you know, in this kind of genre. And I think it says a lot about you guys that you're able to, you know, get all of them on board. Thanks, man. Yeah. And I and I will take any opportunity to gas him up that I can. And I'm going to put Cody's name in that rink because for us, 
he is the guy that gets us there and like deserves to be writing with a lot of them. And he, I feel like that is like something I always want to make sure people know, because I feel like he deserves that credit, but Cody's one of the best writers I know. I have, and I've like, heard that. I give so much credit to all this, some of the stuff that you mentioned, like in your view or even now, it's like, I don't want to look past like what his contributions are to those. Well, I love gonna, that you guys you're make me. You're gonna make me cry on. No, this, no, no. But it's it is it is true. And like I, I don't know. I'm I will stand on the Cody Hill forever, bro. It's, it's <laughs> no. I, I I I I think you're a fantastic songwriter too. I Thank I you. really love that you guys um pay attention to lyrics because that's a thing that a lot of people in metal and metalcore kind of treat as like an afterthought. Yeah, I think that's weird because that's even for people who think that they just listen for riffs, you know, people want that lyric that they can sing along with and chant or maybe put on the back of a shirt or something. And just something as simple as like, you know, the chorus of high horse is just like, it's got that quality to it. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, so I was having this conversation with somebody the other day and, and it's like a crazy juxtaposition that's like, the music that is the heaviest usually comes from like the softest hearts. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. this music that we all grew up on, like, you know, call it what you will, like metal, rock, emo, like whatever. It's like, it's all very like emotional based and like from the heart. So it's crazy that like you have these crazy heavy riffs and, and whatnot. And it's just like, but the lyrics are very just like, this is, you know, somebody that's just pouring their heart out, you know, at, at whatever point. And I think, um, from the beginning, like the point of our band and, and we've kind of gone up and down with like how lyrics go, like our first record is like super positive because it's like, you know, we're like 18 and it's just you're like, like ignorant, ignorant kids. Who ignorant have really kids great. Yeah. yeah you're, living in, you're living with mom and dad. Yeah. You're like, I want to change the world. Yeah. You ain't hit the storm yet. And then like immediately record two, it's just like, everything sucks. Uh, and so I, I feel like, um, the, the way that I like to categorize it and, um, you know, I, I, I do kind of start a lot of our lyrics and, um, and then it kind of ends up becoming a band effort and I'm going to guess up Chris here. Cause Chris uh, has some, yeah, no, Chris had some great lines on the new album. Um, but like records for us, I like to call them yearbooks. Um, and it's just like, whatever the past two years was for us is what I'm going to write about. You know what I mean? Um, and then obviously for this record, you got a whole new, uh, palette of content because of what we've all gone through. Um, and, and like, honestly, the, the writing for Manic started as soon as quarantine hit and it really shouldn't have because, you know, our pressure came out August 30th and then we got pulled off the road basically, uh, March 1st, I think is when we got back and everyone's just like, all right, cool. Well, we're going into quarantine. So it's like, we should have had another year, year and a half on pressure to tour around the world, do support tours, headline, whatever. Um, and like, I was just like, it's time. Like we got to go back in. And um, I was so full of like ideas and emotions. And like, I specifically did not want this record to be a COVID record. Yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't want people to look back on it and just be like, you know, like I didn't want to have songs called quarantine. Those are going to age so fucking badly. Yeah, dude, exactly. It's just like, you know, yo, this song is called quarantine. This oh, song is called yeah, PPE. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, right. I just wanted to, I just wanted to write an honest record emotionally about what last year was like. Uh, a lot of it is mental health based because, you know, a lot of us spent a lot of time in our homes, um, you know, either alone or just in, in mental places that we'd never been in. And like, I'll speak candidly for me. It's like, I, I'm a person that's very based off distraction. And for a band like us, that's been going so hard for the past five years, there's a lot of things that I personally have not dealt with that as soon as I'm home laying in my bedroom, it's just like, right. okay, time to deal with it. You know what I mean? Oh, shit, I I'm alone with my thoughts. My this thoughts. is a good, exactly. Right. And it's, it's terrible. Yeah. And, and it's like soft as it sounds like, you know, that was a big thing for me. And that's what manic represents for, a, for me, for a lot of the songs. It's just like, I would like wake up in different head spaces every morning and, and kind of start there and, um, you know, we, we did a couple cabin retreats as a band, um, a couple months into the pandemic where we all got together and I kind of brought some ideas in and then we would just kind of sit down and like finish songs immediately and, uh, with, with everyone else pitching in. So, um, yeah, I, I think lyrics are something that, I, I mean, I'll admit it. I think our lyrical content suffered on pressure. 
Um, and I, I, not that I don't think there's some great songs on there, but I do think there's some songs that like we could have dug harder on, but give it timing or whatever it might be. Like, it just wasn't there for us. But this, this record, I really feel like every song is just like the lyrics are, are felt and meant. Yeah. And I feel like we kind of just like grind them together. You know, like if you start with certain lyrics and you send them, I'll be like, these are good. But it's like, yeah. but could we say more, you know, without yeah. saying too much? You know, I feel like sometimes you could try to be artsy or yeah. go over the top with it. But it's like, how can we like, I feel like we all kind of are like quality control for each other. You know, it's yeah. like, is this lame to say? Is this cool? Does Is this accurately portray how you're feeling? And I feel like Andrew and Jeremy in particular yeah. are definitely grinders about oh, that. Yeah. And we yeah. had multiple days where not quite arguments. Where you wanted to just, stab them because you're like, Jesus we're just Christ, like, it's okay, good what enough. What are we doing here? Like, we're, we need uh, a payoff also, line. Dude, I'll say it. We spent an entire day on the first little singing part of relapse it was an entire day of uh, and it was lyrical we had the melody it was lyrical and how exhausted and like frustrated were you at oh the your brain i feel like your brain yeah, was, just gets cooked I, I was pissed but yeah, yeah I, but, but but that's I what think, it takes when you're in the studio like yeah with the with all the people that you talked about you're not done until it's the best it can fucking possibly be period and nobody gives a shit if fucking Cody is pissy about it. Like their job is that when you leave the studio, you're like, okay, that was the best fucking song we could have possibly done. And that's all that matters. Yeah. And and some days it's frustrating. Off. Some days you have like no energy for it or you just like my brain. It's like, I'm not trying to cut corners, but I know we have limited time. So like, let's make sure we're going, go like, does, does this line or this word need this much care, yep. you know? And it's like, but they will say, yes, it does. It does. It's like knowing when it does and like when it doesn't, I feel like that helps you be efficient because if you had unlimited time, you know, or two years to write or record a record, you could probably spend way more time. But I feel like, like Cody said, like, of course, over the course of your, like a four record career, you're going to have some lyrics you look back on and you're like, eh, it was not like your best stuff, you know, or sure. whatever. But it's like, I feel like this record in particular like we all just like work together, try to make it the best that we could. And you, Cody was like saying it earlier, but it was one of those feelings like where it's so corny or cheesy to be like, this is our best record. You know, we know it, but it's like, I felt like I could truly sleep at night and show people and talk about it and be like, I believe that with my, all of my being, you know? And yeah. it's like, and I almost don't even care what people say because i think this is awesome you know it's a, it's a bonus that people like it yeah, yeah. you know it, it, it was like <laughs> we were talking to uh like nick nocturnal and mm -hmm. i was like i feel like it's like christmas day but instead of getting a bunch of gifts you've you created what in your mind like a gift and you're about to give it to oops sorry you're about to give it to a lot of people hoping they like what you got them you know and yeah. it's just all the better when you get that positive reaction you know and i was like I stay up till three in the morning, just reading comments on Twitter and YouTube and you're literally consuming. It's like, boom, 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 boom. You know, you're just eating it all up, trying to like, see what the vibe is. Like, is everyone like this or not? Yeah. And I feel like it is just an added bonus where you're like, I, mean, I, I feel cool that record. way about my videos and I put out three videos a week. I can only imagine, you know, if you've invested a year and a half of your life into something. So if, if I have a video that comes out and it doesn't do that well, people don't like it. It's not that big of a deal. Cause I only sort of have to deal with that for three days before I put out a new one. Yeah. You know, if, it's, if it's an album, it's like, okay, we got to live with this for a year and a half. Right. And it's Honestly, 35 minutes of content. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it decides the next two years of your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this record will decide, you know, what, what size rooms we're playing, like how much merch we're selling, like yeah. what the next is. Like, we call yeah. that it's nice for me. I feel like to tell my parents where they're like, how's it doing? I'm like, I feel like I have job security for at least two more years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's yeah. true though. It's like, you're only as good as your last record. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, well, I mean, it, some bands can live off their past catalog forever, but, um, but in, the eyes, in being, the eyes of the internet, you know? Yeah. In the eyes of the internet. Yeah. And, and, uh, with music consumption, like it's crazy to see how music's being consumed with, you know, streaming and, and Spotify and singles versus albums. And it's just like, I think we're about to see a, a very big shift in how, uh, in how music works. Um, so yeah, it, it's kind of, it is kind of, 
I mean, I, I think everything's going to singles, you know what yeah. I mean? Like attention spans are, are certainly shorter than they've ever been. Um, you know, we just put on a record two weeks ago and I guarantee you everyone is already geared up for the next, whatever's going to come. Of course. Out, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so they for heard me, 50 other songs on TikTok like the same day your record came yeah. out. Yeah. And yeah, I so feel like, like, go ahead, Cody. I mean, for me, I sat the day that Manic came out, I sat down to write the first song for the next record. I was like, all right, there here we go. go. Like, it's time. And unfortunately, I'm still so like bled out from, from that process that I don't have anything I'm super excited about. But um, I mean, to me, and like, I want to have new music out literally next year. Like I, I just want to keep it, keep it going. And, uh, and where I feel like we're a band that can do that um, because we, we're all uh, very creative and, and excited about it. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, it's just, crazy to me that you've put out four records now and toured your asses off since day one. That is yeah. a, that is a fucking work ethic. Dude, we literally, I was, this is, probably a little messed up to say, but like, I was so thankful for quarantine because yeah. by the time we got home from Australia in March, we had just done a U.S. headliner from October to November, uh, UK, Europe headliner from January to February, and then got home, had a week home. And it was February to March 1st. We had been in Australia. And I think me and a couple of the guys were so just like, we were getting on the flight home, almost literally just going like, I don't know about you guys. And like, absolutely is not like, I want to quit the band type of thing yeah. but it was a very much like a i need to like slow down just like a yeah. little bit because if we keep doing this i feel like i'm gonna lose my mind and like yeah you know like and quarantine yeah, was like it, for sure but it was like i think quarantine for us was almost half welcome because we were so just like we've been going so hard and taking every opportunity every tour like you know we, we did a, just the most unimaginable tours for our band like we did extremely heavy like deathcore tours and we did like tours where we like didn't necessarily fit in and then you know festivals and whatever like we like we did anything that we could just because uh we were thankful to have the opportunity and we wanted to get out there and do what it you know what it is that we set out to do and thankfully it worked but by the time quarantine came around like i think we were all at the place where it's just like if we don't take a much needed break then things are not going to go very well. Right. Um, like internally, you almost like start to crumble when you don't take care of yourself. You oh know? yeah. I think yeah. about when I've been on like international business trips for like two or three weeks and destroyed me. I can't imagine yeah. doing that for like, you know, nine months. Yeah. But I mean, even like over quarantine, like Chris, Steven, and I mean, Seth basically got married right before the pandemic. Hit. So three of our guys were able to get married um, over the pandemic and have that first year at home for their, with their wives, which is, I would call that a huge win for our band. And um, just so that like, it's not that like tour widow vibe or whatever. It's just like, they got to. That's real though. Yeah. You're not, I'm not planning my wedding on the road. It's like, I don't have to be like, all right, we have to go on our honeymoon for one week, but then I'm immediately going on tour. It's just like, I was able to be married for basically, I think six months before we just went out with Beartooth and it was nice. You know, it's long enough where, you can enjoy that together, you know, but then there's some of that sense and I'm sure she noticed it was just like, you're probably itching to get back out there, you know, and like do what you're passionate about. But yeah, like, and I know it was a tough time for a lot of people. Like I lost a couple of people that I love during that time, you know, not even to make light of it, but I feel like we all just tried to make the best of it. We're like, if we can't tour, like we need to be getting ahead because if not us, it's going to be somebody else, you know? And like, if you're not getting ahead, yep. we're like, you're going to be behind, like when the next record comes up. Are you guys, so uh, we got 15 minutes left here. Are you guys cool to take some questions from the chat? Yeah, of yeah, course. Sounds good. All right. Well, everyone in the chat here, uh, get your questions ready to go. Um, while you're doing that, I just have one last question for you. Um, tell me about like Octane, because that's something I'm trying to kind of get a sense of, because I haven't listened to the radio in 20 years, but I hear from so many people and bands about how much Octane helped them. Can you talk about what role it's played for you and like what I might be missing? And then everyone in the chat, get your questions ready uh, after you answer this one. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I'll I'll speak straight to it. Um, I mean, Octane is the first, well, I'll, I'll go back a little bit. So FM radio, rock stations, whatever your local rock station is, um, you know, a lot of the times are, are run by 
people that are, are not ready for the new wave of rock, um, which yep. entails bands like us. Um, and my perfect example of that is Louder Than Life, which we played not even a month ago. You know, from the bottom up, it was us, uh, Prada, Fever, Motionless, Beartooth, Hailstorm, Rob Zombie. So you got five metal, I'll call them metalcore bands just for the sake yeah. of ease. You got five metalcore bands holding up the two active rock bands. Obviously everyone's going to see Hellstorm and, and Rob Zombie no matter what, but like the crowds that I saw for the five of our bands was insane. And it was, it was just very clear that this is the new age of rock. Mm -hmm. And for me, I feel like Octane is that bridge between like, if we are this and this is active rock, this is Octane. It's the bridge. It's the, it's the, Radio station. Like your radio that's, station that's gonna play more metalcore. Like it's like that. You're not, not quite. A, you're ahead. not quite one of those like kingpins or whoever that have been around forever. You know, it's like, you. It's like you're, like. Uh, In between Rob Zombie and, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah they're things. they're they're literally they are the the station that'll go like this is a breakdown. They're screaming in the song. We'll play it. You know what I mean? And there's different facets. Obviously there's liquid metal, which you'll hear knocked loose or whoever on. Yeah. And there's octane, which is kind of this, like, it's perfect for a band like us that has a lot of melody, but also heavy parts. It's like, well, I would, I mean, to, to a point say that a lot of our songs fall in the octane category long before we knew octane was a, even a possibility for us because we like the heavy verse, uh, you know, clean chorus structure, whatever. It's just like, that's what our band has always kind of been. Um, and then Octane kind of just was the first radio station to kind of look over and be like, I think that this is what's coming up next. And if you listen to Octane these days, I mean, it's absolutely dominated by bands like us. I think Beartooth yep. has the number one song for four weeks in a row right now. Um, and it's, it's exciting for bands like us because up until this point, we've never had someone in our corner rooting us on because if Octane does well, then all of a sudden these FM whatever um, you know, DJs or whatever, start looking at Octane. It's like, well, this did so well on Octane. Like maybe we should start looking at it. And then obviously as old school as it may be, like FM radio is still a very large uh, demographic for rock music. And that gives bands like us a better opportunity when you go to the Danny Wimmer festivals or any of the active rock, the Aftershocks, Welcome to Rockville, Sonic Temple, um, uh, Rock on the Range, like, any, or um, what's it, what's it, Blue Ridge. Uh, any of those festivals where we end up playing with like Megadeth and Five Finger, it's like right. we can fit on a we can fit on a bill like that because of the exposure that people have had to that. And I don't uh, have like I've never had Sirius XM, you know, but I I feel like I consume Spotify like pretty much exclusively when I'm like driving my car. But it's like surprising. I feel like when we did the pressure tour, there were so many people then or even now like that will come out and be like i heard prison on octane or like this tour it's like circle of drain you know it's like incredible the amount of people where i'm just like you guys you have serious xm you know and i'm very like glad they're yeah, playing our stuff too. but it's just like not not the way i consume it but i feel like it definitely is a different market of people who a lot of their musical taste or like what they're consuming is straight up from their radio subscription in their car you know or at home like yeah. And, I, and so, and I'll say for us, and this isn't like a brag point, but I mean, we got set a chart on Monday where our song Circle the Drain from the album is number one on Octane right now, which is crazy for us. You know what I mean? To, to have that opportunity and to, to have that mass appeal, it's like Octane is the bridge that is making heavy music more popular. And so I, I feel like that's something that we can't discredit or even when we get called Octane Core or whatever, like I, I, I don't really care about that because... Octane is the person that is going to keep this music genre pushing forward until like, this is a mainstream thing. Well, I, uh, I, I, I admit that I've called you Octane core many times, but you are right. <laughs> uh, okay. Got some questions here. Um, from Darthorius, what music do guys from wage war listen to except for metalcore? Any artists people might not expect. I listen to a lot of rap mostly. Uh, I definitely am like a rap hip hop fan. I feel like every. Chris is actually like, also an excellent rapper. Just gonna say that. I do rap every once in a while for fun. I'm a bit uh, of a rapper myself. Nice. Maybe we'll do a track then. Yeah, uh, let's go. But that's mostly what I listen to. Like a lot of the popular stuff. Um, I like. 
I mean, I like some of the popular stuff. I'm so hit or miss. You know, it's like if I there's like a playlist on Spotify called Rap Caviar. Yeah. That I'll go on every once in a while. And I am very hit or miss on that one. I feel like there's some of the n- super newer age stuff or like when the mumble mumble rap or whatever, like there's certain stuff. that's just like, it's not my thing. Like I can get, see how people get down to this, but um, I don't know. I kind of just, I listen to like a lot of rap from like five years ago, like three, <laughs> four years ago. Like I just get my playlist set up and I get in the car. I'm like, this is that. Um, I listen to a lot of sports podcasts uh john mayer is probably my favorite artist uh just as a whole i guess um he's brilliant yeah i used to listen to like i mean newfound glory was probably my biggest influence when i was in high school i wanted to be in a pop punk band so so bad Um, oh and you were yeah i mean i was but i i mean like as a career i guess but um lots of rap for me got it i'm a I'm a, a sucker for sad songs. So uh, I like a lot of like pop and country. Uh, I like Ben Camino. Uh, I like Lainey. Um, you know, any country artist that you can think under the sun, I'm a big fan of. So I'm a big country fan too. Uh, got a uh, comment here from uh, Jarrett, uh, my editor. Just want to say I got to see them first at Warp 2016 in Pomona and it made fans of all my friends who are with me. Then was blessed by Cody's surprise set at the Ghost Inside comeback. Much love. So Let's thank go. you for that. Um, thank you. Will Wage War do a song with Jeremy doing guest vocals in the future? Uh, we have <laughs> we have talked <laughs> as you Careful. can as you can imagine. What'd you say? Careful. Yeah, I <laughs> I will be very careful. Uh, as you can imagine, doing four or three records. Three we'll a, he's been involved in four right, in all four yeah with him and being us and like fans of his band it is one of those like every few days or every <laughs> like certain song comes along and you're just like so Jeremy, you know yeah. uh but i feel like at least for the both of us i feel like the time just hasn't been yeah. right like there's songs i would have loved to have we would have loved to have any song he would want to be on. I'm sure we'd be happy to have him, but yeah. I feel like there's been tons of songs where it's like, Ooh, it might like really fit here, but then Britain would do a part. And then he would be the one usually that would leave the discussion. But he's just like, you don't like need me for this. Like, he's like, I feel like Britain is handling it like perfectly. And he's like, apart from maybe slapping his name on the track, he's like, doesn't right. make it like, you know, he's just like, is the time right? Um, I don't know. Like it just hasn't worked out. I would like, I would like to think it'll happen one day, but that day hasn't come yet. That's the simplest answer. Well, he's a very selective guy. Yes. And I respect that as he should be, you know? Yeah. I feel like if he did do a track one day, it'd be like an honor, you know, make it that much more special after all the hard times we've given him. That's right. Love Uh, you, Jared. Question for wage war. Settle this Howard or Jesse era kill switch. Oh, um, I mean, I'll, I'll be just straightforward. I grew up on Howard Killswitch. So, uh, as daylight dies was the rec was, it was a record that really, you know, fired me <laughs> up. So I'm going to go Howard, but, uh, Jesse's side project with MD times of grace. Love it. So I, I can't speak to that either way. I'm not saying Jesse's not it. I just haven't listened to a whole ton of kill switch. Yeah. I, f- I feel similar. I feel like that's it, at least when I was ki- consuming kill switch at the peak level of my life i guess like uh, <laughs> it, it was howard so not that i don't love kill switch you know it's just yeah i respect jesse i need to peep that those new records so that's on me i'm i'm with you both are great but i would go with howard too uh from dust Adore, what do y'all do when you're in a creative rut what do you do to get the brain moving i'm sure you've been there many times putting out as many fucking albums as you have uh i mean for me like time away is important um you know i I think uh i think the construct of just like your brain your body and and all things in life will tell you when it's time you know what i mean for rest to go away to look away or whatever like and and that's what it's always been for me like coming up to this record like we did the la half with drew 
And then before we went in with Andrew and Jeremy, I came in here every day. This is my like studio room. There's guitars all on the floor. You can see it here. Uh, Cause I was trying to work today, but like a uh, day like today, where I was just like, I sat down for two hours and I was like, nothing. I was like, all right, well, it's just not time. I need to go do something else. So uh, time away is the most important thing to me. I agree with that. I feel like the cabin trips were nice. Just waking up, having a coffee out by yourself, like looking at the mountains and you just like sit there in your thoughts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. seek out sad experiences potentially uh, yeah. <laughs> to really just break your heart somewhere that usually does the trick fired myself from the band so I could write a song about it. Oh wait. Yeah. Uh, do you all see Spotify as a ripoff or as a cheap promotional tool? So what are your, yeah. What do you, how, how do you feel about Spotify? Well, I mean, given the last couple of days, it kind of has changed a little bit. Um, what, ha- what happened? uh spotify oh, the songwriting royalty thing yeah i mean they, they have proposed apparently the lowest royalty rate to date uh and that hurts i'll be honest you know like i i know how many times our band has streamed records and it is astronomical to me i mean uh, even looking at our first week and knowing how many streams our album did versus how many sales uh came up on the chart or whatever it's just like it's insane bro like how much of a cut are they proposing it just seemed like the ratio seems uh, ridiculous. I don't think the official number has been released yet of, of what they proposed in whatever court that was. And I think it was last year, the music modernization acts got put into play. Yeah. Um, and I, I, that got through, you know, I think the president at least, but I'm not sure where that landed and whatever comes after that. But um, it's sad, man. Um, you know, looking at the last, even just 10 years of music and, you know, like, it's just, I don't know. Like it's, it is a infinitely hard time to be a musician because more than ever you have to tour. And then in a climate like this, you know, you're screwed no matter what you do. Um, and people don't really buy records, you know, no, and, it's like, and I'll, and I'll admit I'm, re- I am kind of one of them, you know, yeah. it's like, but I also like stream a ton of music from Spotify, you know, and, I would just say, and maybe I probably have this, I'm sure I have this opinion because I'm a musician, but it's like, if it paid people appropriately for the amount of music I consume on Spotify, 10 bucks a month is pretty cheap. You know, it's like, just compared to like, that is one record you bought a month, like back in the day or whatever records cost now, you know, it's like. And it's hard for me as a consumer to go against that. You know what I mean? Like, right. I have every record I ever wanted my fingertips for 10 bucks a month. So it's like, why would I, why would I go buy this one record? So I get both sides of it. I just don't understand. I just feel like if that's the case, they should know. And by now I feel like everyone should be realizing that streaming services like that, like Spotify, you know, that is the main way um, I would guess like people are consuming music nowadays. So it's like, so why not shift it? So artists are actually making money from, I'm sure Spotify is making. No, they're not. Cash. They're barely, barely profitable. Their deal is they're, really? they're 60. Yeah. They've had a couple profitable quarters by like a couple million dollars, which is nothing, but they're or char- good. like charge more than they got to charge. Know, it's more. like, I yeah. feel like they got to charge more. It's the only way. It, I yeah, think that, honestly, bro, I would pay 50 bucks a month to listen to whatever I, totally I would. Yeah. yeah. It's like, and I think, and I think if that's the case, most people would, you know, but I guess it's probably competition Apple Music or whoever yeah. is going to charge less. And, but I, I feel like yeah. one goes up, they all need to. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way yeah. that, I mean, Apple might have a couple more avenues because of what they do, but Spotify, you know, is strictly being streaming or whatever. And I'll say this, like, you know, with playlisting or whatever, like, we did, we certainly did not write a record to playlist, but it's been interesting to see what songs get play, playlisted where, you know what I mean? So, and, and that's a strength too, because you get added to a playlist with a million monthly listeners, which is like, well, that's, however many people that might not have heard of your band before, you know what I mean? Right. So there's, so, there's strengths in both. And that's probably the end that most people will, will play for the positivity. But um, I like certainly, very, it makes your music like just so much more accessible, which is nice, you know, it is nice, yeah. but I certainly would like to see proper payment to the artists that work so hard for it. Well, I know sometimes Allison from Spotify watches. So if you're watching Allison, tell them to raise prices. <laughs> so daddy Charge can buy a new house but then, but also thank you Allison yes Allison's awesome we love her yeah, great. Um, cool well I will let you guys go um, thank you so much for your time for watching the video and reaching out really appreciate it um, thank you 
always Thank happy you. to do anything I can to, to help out uh, for whatever that's worth. So yeah, hopefully we get to hang out next time you guys uh, come through Seattle or Portland. Yeah. I appreciate oh, you. Friend. Thank you for, uh, for the kind review and taking the time to, uh, honestly just kind of dive in. Like this is probably one of the more raw conversations we've had. So I appreciate it. Cool. Well, I appreciate it uh, as well. And I'll talk to you soon. All right. All right thanks. Bye. Take Bye. care.